Has what has been the uh, most uncomfortable role you've played as a uh, as someone who acts? Because I do Ooh. feel like there's a, there's a lot that comes with that gig. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of dive. I think in Antebellum there. was tough. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do a role like that again. It was really tough to go and be on a plantation and you know play an enslaved person in modern day times. It was a lot on See, me. That seems deep. That it seems took, heavy. Yeah, it was very heavy. And it took a lot for me to get that off of me, too, because mm. immediately after I rapped, my friends were like, let's go to Mexico. And so I was like, well, I need a vacation. But I couldn't shake right. that role. And I would just remember showing up just like being super uneasy. And I'm like, girl, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, listen, I lived basically lived on the plantation for two months. Crazy. You know, I did it for my reasons to chant to honor, you know, my ancestors and to bring awareness um, you know, to to a lot of injustices. But yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I think that was probably my hardest. So when they say like, when you act, you can like get into the role. Yeah. I just saw um, uh, the guy who plays Franklin Saint on Snowfall say he like channeled the devil to be Franklin Saint in Oof. Snowfall. And he's like, it, it like, Oof. it messed with him like after the show yeah. was over a little bit. Yeah, people don't realize you're, you're living and breathing. And I always, you know, say out into the universe like reduce Janelle Monet. I want you to see the spirit of this character and and uh, yeah a lot a lot a lot of times it's hard to shake those roles off uh somebody who you had as a mentor which not a lot of people can say is uh rest in peace to Prince Prince yeah. is one of the greatest creators of all time quite possibly time. the most talented musician ever yeah. he's up there in terms Absolutely. of just the guitar I mean, he could do it all how did you guys initially connect well he um, it's always this story just still freaks me out. Not freaks me out, but just I can't even believe that it happened. But he was supposed to show up. I was open, opening up for Raphael Sadiq. This was doing my yeah, exactly. My first album, and um, I get a knock after I get finished performing, and you know I had a. I remember I had a sinus infection that day. I was just like loopy, and uh, this. Uh, Really, really pretty girl knocks on the door and she was like, I have somebody who wants to talk to you. And the girl was DJ Rashida, mm -hmm. who was Princess DJ at the time. But I didn't know that that was, right. you, know, you know, his DJ. And she just gives me the phone and then I'm like, hello. And I'm like congested. And I'm just like, hello. And he's like, hello, Janelle. Did you know right away? And I'm like, <laughs> hi, who is this? This is Prince. Prince? Yeah, Prince. I was supposed to come to your gig, but they gave me the wrong time. And I'm like, what? Like, just freaking out or trying not to because right. I don't want to embarrass myself. And so then he proceeds to say, listen, I was supposed to come. We're having a jam session. You know, do you and the band want to come back and, you know, jam? And I was like, yeah, we want to come back and jam. And <sighs> the rest was history. The rest was his. Was this on the back. Minneapolis tour, tour stuff? No, he was in L.A. Oh, okay. So what he would do is, and he was one of the best, like, party throwers that you will ever know. I mean, we have seen uh, some Chappelle skits that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how true those right, skits right, are, right, right. but my interactions with him have always been, like, can play guitar and party, like, till the sun comes up. Seven in the morning. I didn't leave that night. Me and my band, we did not leave till seven in the morning. So this was, was a jam session that didn't yes, end until oh wow seven in the morning. It was it was just it was amazing, and he was just talking to me. He was like he was telling me everything he loved about what he had seen me do, and I was like, I didn't even know you looked on the internet, right? Like you know who I yeah. am. Yeah, wild. I'm just like I would just think you would be somewhere like in a, a yeah. in in some sort of castle, right? You know, with, with no Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? With no Wi-Fi, but he was very aware, and I always tell people. The best thing about him is like, even though he was mysterious, he never let his mystery get in the way of his mentorship. Mm. He was always like wanting to give advice and, you know, open up if you have any questions about the business and didn't even charge me anything to be on my album. Give me the most, you have three pretty serious mentors, Prince, Puff Daddy, Big Boy. <laughs> give me three lessons each of them Ooh. taught you. Wow. Um, Prince is like, obviously, like the blueprint for, um, you know, owning your, you know, like 
as an artist, not being afraid to fight for what you are owed mm-hmm. at, on the business side of things. Right. Um, and also creating a, a blueprint um, that felt so free and you could do anything, you know, and just, and just also speaking with him, he just always reminded me that musically there was nothing that I could not do. And I think with Puff, who has been a person of his word, um, you know, we have a partnership together when he had first heard me and doing the science fiction, singing about that and, you know, doing doing whatever I wanted to do um, as an artist creatively, he always said, like, I don't want to mess that up. Right. I just want the rest of the world to see what I saw. What I just saw tonight, I just want to help. So I called him at a really good time. And, um, you know, he's just always been an advocate for for me. If I need to have, like, any business conversations, I can. I know I can call him and, you know, listen to him as well and then he just taught me to just like be a fan of your own shit too Mm -hmm. you know promote your stuff if you love it you gotta promote your shit yeah yeah you worked hard and i think with big boy big boy was just i mean i gotta give it to him you know the reason why puff even knew about me was because of the work that big boy gave to me i was singing back up i was also on idlewild you know he was really really promoting me with Purple Ribbon, he taught me the importance of I think staying with family, like Were staying you with the, the Purple people. Ribbon? For like a little, little bit, mm. yeah. My my, la- but I always had my label, but right. I would do partnerships. So it was like Purple Ribbon, it yeah. Was, so it was you, was it was a Bubba Spark? Yes. <laughs> Look at you. A lot of people do not remember Killer Mike. Killer Mike, Scar. Man. By the it way, Killer Mike's new album. Which is coming I need out, to Michael? Listen. Is it that one? Is it coming? It's not out, out yet. Okay, I, I listened to it uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay, it's incredible. Oh. One of the greatest rappers of all time. Oh, I gotta, I gotta listen to it. Yeah, it's incredible. 